So I'm Neil Adams. I'm a senior research associate in the Pakud Lab. And uh, as Logan mentioned, uh, our project uh, is a collaboration with the Tyson Lab in the biology department. And uh, what we're doing is essentially doing um, validation of a cell cycle model that they, that they developed back in 2004, and they've been expanding since then. Um, the 2004 model is shown here. Um, the main just, justification for this is that uh, there are lots of uh, mathematical models for biological systems and processes, and uh, they all involve uh, a variety of different uh, um, formats. For example, they can be Boolean or use uh, ordinary <coughs> differential equations, which, which is the one that the Tyson Lab, Tyson Lab uses. Um, and uh, the beauty of uh, the cell cycle model is that in budding yeast in particular, there's a, a huge wealth of information to uh, develop the model. For example, this model was, was uh, uh, developed in a way that it emulated the phenotypes of over 120 different cell cycle mutations that have been made in budding yeast over the last 40 years. Um, but the, but the problem is that there's not a lot of validation that has been done on uh, biological models. And so that, that's our role. Uh, we're the experimentalists in this. And our role is to basically uh, test uh, predictions of the model. And the model predicts certain phenotypes uh, depending on uh, uh, certain mutant combinations of genes that are knocked out in various components of the, the pathway. And these are all novel uh, combinations. So there's no data available in the, in the public database that indicates what the phenotype should be. And so our role is to test these phenotypes. And as Logan mentioned, uh, the main part of the, the model that we're testing right now is the G1S transition, because that's a, a fairly easy one to test just based on gross morphology of the cells. And uh, as he mentioned, uh, if you slow up G1S transition, the cells get bigger. And if you speed through the transition, the cells tend to be smaller. Um, so the, exper uh, the experimental part of this is to uh, basically just do live cell analysis. And we, we actually get a bit more information out of this than we need. Um, because we also we get cell size distributions, which isn't really modeled, and because uh, the model at this point is a deterministic model, not a stochastic one. Um, but as an example, I'm I'm just showing uh, uh, stills of uh, of the kinds of uh, movies that we do, and so here's Wild Type and uh, a mutant called Whiskey Five Delete, and th these are all full del deletions of the genes. Um, SWI6 delete and then SWI6 Y5 double mutant. So the model predicts that the, the whiskey 5 mutant should be small, and this has been well established in the, in, the, uh, in the public database. And in fact, they do look smaller. And if you do uh, um, a more in depth analysis, it's quite obvious that the cells, uh, cell distributions are on the small side. Um, on the other hand, something like uh, a SWI6 mutant, which is required for progression through uh, G1S, is on a large size and uh, is predicted to be on a large size, and that's in fact what we see. And, but there are some, some uh, predictions from the model that have turned out to be not quite what we expected uh, when we look at the cells, and the, the SWI6 whiskey 5 double mutant is, is an example of that. The model would predict that they look like SWI6 mutants, but they don't. So there are uh, various uh, things that we need to, uh, to um, test in more depth um, by doing molecular analyses of these, these uh, proteins that are involved in this cell cycle, and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that more at my poster. Thanks.